been nine months since I decided to drop out of university and go on a solo traveling adventure across Southeast Asia. And this summer, I made the decision to go back to school to finish up my degree. So tomorrow is officially going to be my last first day of school ever. I mean, never say never because while my essay writing skills have gone pretty rusty after taking a year off, I've always had this nerdy part of me that loves school and learning and the back to school vibes. I don't know, there's just something about September. The smell of fall settling into the air, the first day of class jitters that I still get no matter how old I am, picking out my outfit of the day, re-watching Gilmore Girls for the bajillionth time, studying stuff I know I'll never use again, but going back to school always makes me feel like a kid again. Ow. Aloe vera plant just attacked me. This has been my go-to breakfast these days. Mm. Gotta cherish the last few sweet blueberries and strawberries of the season. Also, uh, dick dick. I haven't done anything for the past week except read. It's kind of bad. But I have a feeling that this year is going to be extra hard for me to switch off summer mode because I've kind of had a nine month long summer. Part of me doesn't want to start school simply because I want to keep reading this Throne of Glass book series. Oh my God, guys, this has taken over my entire life. I didn't know I could be so into fantasy novels. I have no idea what I'm going to do with myself once I finish this book series. It's simply unreal. And you know what else I found out that's unreal? Greek food. I got to try it for the first time today. And yes, it's a little embarrassing. And it baffles me how I spent 22 years without these dips and flavors and the freshness. It was definitely the most delicious way to say goodbye to summer. Anyways, the first week of school is always a little weird. It's a lot of figuring out your new routine, where your classes are, useless lectures where you literally just go over the syllabus for an hour. My first week of class was extra weird. It's a four day week and every day it's all just one class. They call it a field project where we spend the entire semester working with a business and try to fix a problem for them. It's basically free amateur consulting. Quite honestly, the only part I'm looking forward to is getting to dress up and meal prepping my baked oatmeal. <laughs> So I thought I'd take a moment to give you guys a little summary of what my university career has looked like because it's been a little all over the place as in just a big shit show. <laughs> so in my first year when I was a little baby, I was originally planning on doing a double degree in health science and business purely because I was so wrapped up in looking smart and I thought science was the only path. I could take. The double major would have taken me five years. So the first two years would have been purely health science and year three and four would have been in business and fifth year would have been a mix of the two. Then boom, four months into first year, COVID hit. One week of online classes turned into a month and then a semester and then a whole nother year. And at the beginning of COVID, I started YouTube. And I was trying to do school and YouTube at the same time. And at some point I realized I hated every single thing about health sciences. I was like, okay, bye bye health sciences. I'm only gonna get a business degree now. And then when I started my third year, it was a mix of online and in-person classes Brain fuel. and I was in a very unstable mental state. I was just very unwell, burnt out, panic attacks. I didn't just hate going to school. Going to school made me like hate myself. My brain kind of just feels weird. It's like, why are you choosing to come back to a place that made you so unhappy before? The business school I'm going to has a little bit of a toxic environment. I feel like people just make you feel inferior if your goal in life isn't to pursue investment banking. There's also a huge party culture and I'm more into the stay home at night and read in my bed type culture, so. This business school is also its own separate building away from the main university. They try to make you feel like special or something by having you pay triple the tuition to sit in this big fancy building. Anyways, what I'm trying to say is you're like trapped in this big beautiful building, okay? And this is kind of personal, but I haven't really dated many people in my life. One long-term relationship, one like three month thing, one high school situationship. And each of those three people were stuck with me in this tiny building. The universe was testing me. Honestly, in retrospect, it's kind of hilarious, but in the moment, I literally felt like I was suffocating. I was scared to walk down the halls, I hid in the bathroom, and the guy that I had been in a long-term relationship with started seeing someone new, and I had to see them everywhere. I think it really bothered me because I was struggling with all these other things on the side too. So basically, I didn't really end up going to school because I mentally couldn't handle being there. And I barely, like, barely passed my courses, which for someone who's prioritized getting good grades and doing well in school their entire life just shows how bad my mental health was. And in this almost delusional state of mind, I decided to drop out of school and pursue a degree in dietetics, which lasted literally two months because then I hit rock bottom and just could not keep functioning. It was bad. 
it's funny how sometimes we have to let it get so bad before we realize we need to take care of ourselves. It's been nine months now and I made the decision to come back when I was in a stable, clear-minded state. And I'm ready to do some accounting, finish up my degree, and honestly, I'm kind of excited for it. But that was after like, a lot of time healing doing the work slowing down and getting lots of therapy and that's why i am too excited to announce the sponsor of today's video better help you guys know i love better help i use better help and i'm very grateful for better help regardless if you have a clinical mental health issue like depression or anxiety or if you're just a human in this world going through a tough time therapy can give you tools to approach your life in a really different way better helps mission is to make therapy more accessible and affordable and that's a really important mission because finding a therapist can be really hard especially when you're limited to the options in your area BetterHelp's platform makes finding a therapist so much easier because it's online, it's remote, and just by filling out a few questions, BetterHelp can match you with a professional therapist in as little as a few days. It's super easy to sign up and get matched with a therapist. I'll be putting a link in my description. It's betterhelp.com sun. Clicking that link will support this channel, but it will also get you 10% off your first month on BetterHelp so you can connect with the therapist and see if it helps you. And because finding a therapist is a little like dating, if you find that you don't fit with that therapist, which is very common in therapy, you can easily switch to a new therapist without any additional costs or worrying about insurance or anything like that. Even as as life gets busier and I feel like I have a thousand more things to worry about, my mental health is still gonna be my number one priority, which means doing the things to take care of myself and continuing with therapy. So if you're struggling, consider online therapy with BetterHelp. Click the link in my description or you can visit betterhelp.com sun. Thank you again, BetterHelp, for supporting this channel. I'm so excited to go home and eat dinner. <sighs> it actually tastes like banana bread. I'm a little late on the trend. What's new? I swear Instagram will not stop showing me this recipe. Like I open the app and it's just date bark everywhere. And I'm not complaining. I mean, we love a date peanut butter and chocolate situation always. Insanity. The thing I don't understand though, is like why we have to overcomplicate everything and make it into a bark. Like why can't we just eat an individual date and smear peanut butter and stuff chocolate inside? But yeah, this was still very fun and very sticky. Perfect sweet treat. You know, as a business student, I think about money a lot, which makes me reflect on how I spend my money and I realize the only thing I spend it on is food. When I spend money on food though, I feel like I'm not only buying a yummy meal, but like an experience, an edible piece of art, medicine for my body, fuel for my brain. I'm purchasing a good mood. It's an investment for my happiness. Personally for me, a good relationship with food makes a full life and good food makes a good life. I mean, there's very little that makes me happier than a snack break, my mom's cooking, knowing there's gonna be dessert afterwards. Truly, I can't think of a better way to spend all my money, which explains a lot actually why business has always been my worst subject. Yeah, to give you guys a little bit more insight on my degree, it was actually my worst mark all throughout high school and all throughout university. It just doesn't click in my brain and I don't love it. While we're on the theme of doing things I don't love, fun texture. Chia pudding is my enemy, but I just wanted to give her another shot. I really want to be able to like her because she's so good for me and it looks so good when everyone else eats it, but sometimes you just can't force what's not meant to be. Giving chia seed pudding another chance. Much better. Anyways, so what am I doing in business school when clearly this is not my calling in life? Honestly, this degree is purely just to get a degree because I have one year left. It's practical, it's versatile, it may come in handy in the future. It's a solid safety net. And don't get me wrong, I'm all for studying what you love if you know what you love, for pursuing your dreams outside of the typical university route if you know what that is. Don't hate me, but I think purple grapes are better. Everyone always says, follow your dreams, follow your heart, do what you're passionate about, but I have absolutely no idea what that is. I literally just started learning about who I am. I feel like I just met her last week and I've become six completely different people just in the past year. I have no idea what it is that truly interests me, what my dream career or careers are, or who I want to be, and I'm not in a rush to figure it out. Shiba! So saucy. Yummy. Wow. Not living for yourself makes you unhappy. Like forcing yourself to follow a path. 
or squish yourself into a mold or wear certain clothes or never eat your favorite foods just to fit in, just to be more perfect. It's not what life's about, but that was literally what my entire life had been about. It was really hard for me to even imagine following a different path when we all grew up with these expectations for what a typical successful life looks like and a checklist of all the steps we needed to take to get there. Life is not about winning, but we kind of make it about that in a way. We think if we follow all the right steps and make enough right decisions and make this much money by a certain age or find the perfect partner, we win. But personally, I don't feel like I'm winning when I'm living to impress others, living for social media, living for a body, living to achieve goals that aren't really even my own. I think you win if you learn from your mistakes, stand up for yourself, pursue any life that makes you feel fulfilled. If you take care of your mental health, if you have a healthy body image and relationship with food, if you just live for yourself, I think that's when you win. You jump in your car. Give me an example of the brand of the story. Well, like a Ferrari. A Ferrari. You jump in your Ferrari in the, in the, in the morning. Yeah. Race it off to your early morning. The path I'm on right now may not be the right path in other people's eyes. It may not be the path that will land me a big job in a big city. It may not guarantee a stable income, a house in the suburbs with two kids. It may not be the typical path to success, but it's my own path. And the more I stroll down this path of mine, I've realized the moment you stop chasing things that aren't meant for you, the right things will catch you. I definitely feel like I didn't have the typical university experience, but I also feel like it's more common nowadays to not have a traditional university experience anyways. As you can see from this video, I'm alone a lot. I eat lunch alone, I spend more time reading about characters and hanging out with real people. I talk to a camera more than I do with friends. I stay in on Friday nights, mostly because I want to, but also because I don't feel like I have people to go out with. Well, yes, I am very, very introverted, I fully admit. It has been kind of lonely at some points, but I also really do believe the loneliest moments have brought me the biggest growth. I think a part of me will always admire those who made friends and joined lots of clubs and got to do the roommate thing, but just because my college experience looks different, it doesn't mean it was worse. I've lived at home all five years of college and I got to eat home cooked meals every night and spend time with my dog and, and focus on my relationship with myself and I've just learned to stop comparing my life to the expectation I've had for what my life and college experience and friendships should look like. I'm at this point where I'm actually so proud of where I am and so content with who I've become and I I wouldn't have grown to become this person without all the decisions I've made. Sometimes reckless, emotional, silly, could have used a little bit more common sense decisions, yes, but still decisions I would make again. Ah! Stop sending me food! Yeah, stop. You know I love it. Hope you and mama's son, brother and father son are doing well. Snacks, snacks, snacks. I put some of my favorite crackers that I accompany my cheese consumption with. But girl, I love these truffle chips. Oh, no way. Mm. That's addicting. Oh, air one. Oh my God, this bag is such thick quality. Feel the quality of this bag. Wow. Whoa, look how big it is. It's so hard, is it? Look. Oh, your handwriting is so beautiful. Oh my goodness. Milk chocolate covered peanut butter pretzels. Ah! Mm, this is my snack. Peanut butter protein granola. <gasps> Dark chocolate drizzled plantain chips sprinkled with sea salt. Okay, this is too exciting. Delicious. Peanut butter caramel coated popcorn. Dude, that's genius. Oh my god, why did you get me so much stuff? Peanut butter? Your vanilla paste? I would never purchase this for myself. The legit stuff. It kind of exploded. I missed you. Oh my god, no way you got me who? Ube mochi pancake mix. Black garlic, mushroom and company. Sriracha sprinkle. Green goddess. For Milo! Aww. Oh, that's so nice. Milo. Roll over. Where are you going? Do you want more? Say thank you.
Happy Friday! Only have a 30 minute session today. We've got to drive 30 minutes to get there, 30 minutes back, but it's okay. Okay, it's the weekend, which means I can read all day tomorrow. This week has been a little rough, I'm not gonna lie. Just figuring out how I feel. It's exhausting. Emotions are exhausting. School is exhausting. Life is exhausting. But I do have two very ripe bananas ready, and I kind of want to make a banana coffee cake that I saw on Instagram. This is what gets my brain through the day. Adulting, studying, balancing everything, and all the pressure we put on ourselves, it's not easy. We've all got a lot of stuff going on. If you're trying to keep up with school, work, or find a job, go to therapy, eat enough during the day, fit in time to move your body, sleep enough, work on your dreams, prioritize your relationships, and also make time for yourself. Or if you're simply just trying to get through the freaking day. On repeat. I see you. Give yourselves a lot more credit because you're doing great. And genuinely, you can't do your best or fully be present, whether that's in school or a job or in a relationship, if you're not taking care of yourself, mentally and physically. So here's your reminder, guys, that you come first. And I know that's so hard to do when everything else seems so much more important. That exam, that interview, the gym, being there for your friends, your family. But if you don't put yourself first, all of those things become harder to do. And with all you have going on, the last thing you need to worry about are calories, your body, or your weight. Sometimes the best thing you can do for yourself is care a little less, lower your expectations, sleep more, not less, set boundaries, just be nicer to yourself. Reflecting on this first week, I had a little bit of PTSD and occasional moments of panic. I did think about dropping out over a dozen times, but I did get through it. Voluntarily going back to this dungeon where I made so many memories from such a bad time in my life was actually a lot more difficult than I care to admit, but seriously, nine months ago, you couldn't pay me to step foot in this building, so I'm pretty proud of myself. I don't love the person that I was two years ago, the decisions I made, the people I hurt. I've been trying to forgive myself for a long time. It's really hard to reflect on the choices I made before I really started working on myself and healing. I've realized I haven't really been able to move on because I'm still holding on to all this guilt and shame. But here's a little reminder for myself and anyone else who needs it. You are human. You are meant to make mistakes. Forgive yourself for messing up, for not knowing any better, and unintentionally hurting people. You are not who you used to be. You have learned and grown and changed. You're allowed to accept what happened and move forward and carry on with more knowledge and awareness and experience. Wow. You didn't know what you know now. There's no way you could have. And all of those experiences have brought you closer to better understanding yourself, treating others better, treating yourself better. So stop being so hard on yourself. You deserve your own forgiveness. And you're worthy of the time it takes to do the things that heal your heart. There are a lot of times, especially this week, where I'm like, I wish I was over this, or I can't believe this still bothers me. Why is it taking me so freaking long to move on? I know sometimes it feels like we just have such a long way to go. Or we get frustrated with our own brains and the pace that we're healing and learning and growing, but sometimes we forget to give ourselves credit for the progress we have made. For example, even acknowledging that I want to feel better, admitting I need help, choosing to eat when no one else is, talking myself out of a spiral, that's progress. I can look at my social media analytics mm. now, and even if it says I've lost like 100,000 subscribers and then I have terrible sure. engagement, hate myself anymore. <laughs> All the meat juice is soaked into the bun. I took a lot of time to figure out who I was without YouTube, without measuring my worth based on those numbers, and I realized my value actually doesn't decrease when it decreases. I can read hate comments now and laugh. Every hate comment used to break my heart, and I finally like myself enough that I don't need everyone else to like me. I don't let the bad days make me believe it's a bad life. I am truly best friends with my body. I have embraced that she is going to and meant to change, and I don't need to hide her or ignore her or be ashamed of any part of her. 
I can walk through the halls of the school and not feel my heart getting absolutely obliterated and have to hide in the bathroom. They're just arms. They are actually very strong arms. They help me create art and hold my books and spoon my peanut butter. I love these arms. I let people misunderstand me now. Life's easier that way. I stopped caring. Not in a hateful way, but in a peaceful way. And I've found that I can live my life however it is I want to. I can change my mind whenever I want to. I can eat anything I want to. I can work out however it is I want to. No one actually cares. So do what you like, take all the time you need, and be there for yourself first. Oh no. Should I take it off? Oh, you're so cute. Thank you. You guys have all seen me naked before. I promise you, when I say you, I also mean me. You are just one page away from new people and experiences that make you feel at home. Someday, maybe a few months or years from now, you'll be sitting in the sun on a quiet afternoon or at a restaurant surrounded by your best friends or walking down the road in a country you've always dreamed of visiting or at a wedding of a person you would never have expected would become one of your favorite people. And you will be so grateful for how all things in your life brought you here to these people, to this place, to this knowledge, this moment, to you. Oh my god, it's so yummy. Oh mm, my goodness. You don't ever have to do what everyone else around you is doing. Your life, your body, your interests don't have to look like anyone else's. You're allowed to change your mind, decide it's not what you want anymore, decide to forgive yourself, drop out, then come back, then drop out again. Get a degree in your least favorite subject. Give it time. Sometimes you just gotta wait. And some things are worth waiting for. Most good things don't happen immediately. Sometimes the best things happen from seeds you planted a long, long time ago. And if you have absolutely no idea where you wanna go, literally same. Sometimes we just have to choose the best choice we have at the time and go with the flow. too much because we're going to make the most of this time in between. We're going to live and dance, laugh, cry, eat, try, fail, bake, heal, fail again. You're going to understand why things had to happen the way they did, why people had to leave, why you needed to be disappointed, why they moved on, why you needed to drop out, why you had to be sad for a little, why you needed to make all those mistakes, and why you chose to try again. I think moments like this help remind me that some of the most beautiful moments of your life have still yet to arrive. <laughs>